Hello everyone, welcome to our eagerly awaited accessible tourism chat on the Daily Sib. I think the first thing to just really be very clear about is that we understand that no one is able to travel right beyond their own street, let alone a lot of disabled people aren't even going out their door. So we are not lost on the current situation that traveling is not very possible for anybody at the moment. But it doesn't mean that we can't provide some lighthearted entertainment during these difficult times for people. And I think, you know, once this is all passed, there are people that are still going to want to travel. And we're going to talk a bit about um, being an influencer within the travel sector and also for businesses, why they should be inclusive and accessible. So I think it's great while we've all got a bit more time, while some people's businesses are very quiet, particularly in the travel sector, right? Um, just to take stock and so to help deliver these um, fun and helpful information, I'm going to bring in today's guest, which is Carrie Ann Lightly. Hi. There we go. Hello, Carrie. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. I've just had a little bit of time outside in the sunshine, which just makes so much of a difference. Right. Um, and it's really good to see your face. You too, you too. It's It's been a while, right? And uh, obviously very difficult times. And I think, you know, that's why I wanted to to make that point there to to everyone that we're not lost on the irony of doing accessible travel. But before we, before we get too stuck in, just for anybody, I think, you know, many people are going to come across your work already, but just give a little intro to you and some of the things you get up to before coronavirus. Of course, yeah. So um, I'm Carrie Ann. Um, I have cerebral palsy. I use wheelchair. Um, um, I have worked in the fields of accessible tourism and travel and marketing for roughly around 15 years now. Um, right. And part of that work is that I write a blog which is mainly focused around travel, although obviously I'm having to um, diversify a little bit at the moment. Um, and so as part of that, I might go off and travel to um, somewhere where I would write a review. So I'd, I'd go and stay in an accessible cottage for the weekend, for instance, write a review, publish it on my blog. Um, and I also do little things like sort of opinion pieces about accessible travel, anything that's of the moment. And obviously, um, as any blogger does, various things going on on my social media channels and things most of the time. I think that comes out. Is, that, is your mic in the laptop, Gary Ann? Yes. Yeah, sorry, there was just a couple of weird noises. I don't know, maybe if you accidentally moved or touched it, but it, it seems okay now anyway. We'll, we'll, we'll just keep an eye on the sound. Yeah, yeah, no um, Cool, that's, yeah, you're fine now. Um, so one, um, thanks for the intro. I think it's great to to set the scene. Well, we've already had a little comment from Facebook, which is our friend Chris, who's obviously a big campaigner about accessible flying. So Chris, if you've got any questions for me or Carrie Ann or anything you want to just mention, then feel free to, you know, to get involved in the conversation. It's not just myself and Karen, it's everyone watching. We've also got uh, Gavin, fab seeing you both on the same screen, gotta love this tech thing. Obviously Gavin is at Neatbox with the welcome app and um, doing lots of great stuff around customer service. So thanks as well for joining us there. And likewise, any questions, Gavin, do feel free to, to get involved. So um, I think let's start with the virus, Carrie Ann. I think it's, yeah. it's too big a deal to, to ignore. So, you know, what what for you, what, what has it meant and what have you been doing with the fact you're not able to travel? So I've cancelled quite a lot of trips, um, obviously, which is, is the yeah. simplest and most sensible thing to do, but is also really disappointing. And I think it's okay to be disappointed. Like there is a lot Absolutely. in the world at the moment and there are a lot of people struggling with much bigger issues, but I can also be sad that I can't go to York for Easter weekend as, as was planned. Um, so that's that's what it's meant sort of on practical terms. It's meant that I, like a lot of people, have much more time at my disposal now um, and I'm able to enjoy a bit of a slower pace of life 
Um, mm -hmm. I'll be honest and say it's taken me a couple of weeks to get there. You know, I think um, yeah. when when the virus really started having a big impact on this country and the way that we live our lives, the the instant mm -hmm. reaction is almost shock and then grief and you know there's it's a lot to process and the first couple of weeks for me were really really tricky um from a mental health point of view but i also believe that i kind of had to go through that to to get to a yeah. place of of acceptance and of let's try our best to make the most of this and you know use this time in a way that that makes us feel good um I'm really wary of coming across as preachy. Like I'm, I'm doing a lot of things that are really helpful for to me at the moment. But yeah, I, I think that's the best way to. We'll come on to being an influencer in a little while. But I think all we can really give is our experience, and then people can take from that what they need to. Absolutely, and that's what I'm. That's what I've always been about. You know, in my writing, in my work, I don't profess to be an expert in anything or to to um, know anything much about anything other than my experiences and my needs and if somewhere along the line that it makes my content helpful to other people then that is excellent um, but I'm not you know I'm not an access auditor I'm not um, I'm not trained in sort of pan disability and all of those sorts of things but I do think that, you know, each individual's experience is, is valid and is something that can help others when it's shared. Yeah, I agree. I just I saw it interesting. You said you're not pan-disability. You know, I'm, I have the experience of someone with spinal muscular atrophy. I have the experience of someone in a wheelchair. And there are elements of, like, you know, loved ones. Like I, one of my cousins is dead. Death, one of my cousins syndrome. So there's some life experience of some yeah. other conditions, but even no, but though I have loved ones with those conditions, it doesn't mean that I Was that? Very diverse family you've got there, Martin. We well, are, yeah, you yeah, know, it's interesting that it's not just genetics because they're all different conditions, Absolutely. but yeah. it's all the male on my mum's side of the family so that's, a, that's something quite interesting in that but um, the reason I brought up the medical condition side and me and you are very um social model in general aren't we but Absolutely. someone has written a comment here which is from from twitter from periscope I have AIDS is that a disability now my my feeling is it is because it's a long-term health condition under the Equalities Act anything that's a long term which is more than 12 months a health condition is qualified as disabled. I don't know if you've got any thoughts on that, Carrie Ann. I, I mean, for me, it's about the impact at the end of the day. It's, you know, and, and it's also about what you're comfortable with, with, you know, la labels are labels. And I, on a personal level, I'm not really too concerned about language on a professional yeah. level. I think that social model language is very important. If you if you have a condition that impacts your day to day life in such a way that it wouldn't if you didn't have it, and you're comfortable calling yourself disabled, then then go for it. Well, yeah, I mean that it's basically semantics and labels, and so under the social model, disabled is by barriers of society. So I would imagine someone with AIDS will still be facing barriers particularly attitudinal barriers so Absolutely. from the social media perspective it's disabling from the societal barrier and then from the health condition side I, I think there's a similar point but I think as you're saying every individual has their sort of preference about how they identify and label and, and it, so it's actually up to the individual to a degree as well. Totally, totally. it's personal choice is is my opinion. Yeah, so we, we've got a few comments coming in here, Carrie Ann. So we've had obviously the question we just answered there around is AIDS a disability? Um, we've got Hassan from Morocco is saying something about um, inventing a speciality handbike. So, yeah, fair play. That, that's awesome to hear about some innovation oh. going on. We've got Ross 
who is saying about even two people with the same condition have different needs and expectations as our Mallorca hotel stay highlighted. And I think well, that gives us a nice segue back to influencing Carrie Ann because I went to Mallorca, I blogged about it from my point of view of SMA. Ross there has SMA. He went and stayed in the same hotel and it wasn't suitable for his needs. So even the I same also, condition and disability. The there as well. So yeah, we've all been there. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was just gonna my question to you, Carrie Ann, I guess on that side is, you know, when you've done the travel writing and even like you were sort of saying about your experience at home, just give us some insights as an influencer how you try to straddle that giving advice and tips to people, but also it being your experience. Yeah, I, I think I just try my best to be upfront and honest and to say, you know, I mean, I wrote a blog post a little while ago where we, for which the title was why terms like fully accessible don't help disabled people. Um, and yeah. it's actually become one of my most read blog posts. Um, and it's interesting because so many people agreed with what I was saying there, but a lot of people, for a lot of people, it was also quite enlightening because I think, you know, we get so used to this language and terminology that we see every day all over the internet and we sometimes we might not question it. So I really try not to use any terms like that because, you know, in a nutshell, fully accessible, what does that actually mean? For me, for yeah, you, for Ross, for, for, you know, anybody else with any kind of impairment, that, that doesn't communicate anything to us in terms of our actual needs. Um, so to answer I, mean, that, I think I am careful yeah, go on, that I use when I when I write and I'm careful not to use sweeping statements like fully accessible. And I am yeah. upfront and I am honest and I say this review or these tips that I'm giving or whatever, they're based on my experience. Based on my experience as a wheelchair user who is able to transfer, um, I hope that they'll be helpful. If there's some more information that you need, let me know and I'll see if I can get it together for you. Yeah, that sounds a good a good approach. I mean, because there are there are facts and statistics and objective information, like you know the width of a door frame and yeah. is there room under a bed for a hoist as examples. They are they are factual. So I'd I'd imagine that you do have parts of a blog post will go a little bit factual, but at yeah. the same point you can get facts from other sources whereas I think as a blogger it's storytelling it's it's more about how you felt and the emotion and I, mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth but I guess that's my opinion when I'm writing it's it's to entertain and move the reader and then they can get facts and information later but obviously with the case with Ross it's maybe our responsibility to point people in the right direction as well Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, for me, the question is always, what can I bring to this that somebody else can't? Because that, as, as a blogger, yeah. that's what it's all about. It's, it's, not, it's not about trying to be better than anybody else, trying to get more views than any other bloggers. It's about sharing you and who you are. And yeah. so my, my question is always, what can I write about on this topic, on this subject, within this review? that somebody else can't um yeah. that's the whole point of it to me um and and then within that yeah there is, there's certainly a responsibility i think to say you know check that this check that this meets your needs or whatever here's where you can find factual information and that's something that i try to be careful to do and i think that's why there's a need for more influencers because I was chatting to Shannon, who volunteers on Horizons yesterday, on that uh, was on the YouTube channel only. Uh, by the way, I'm loving the fact that this is streaming to four. I, I never felt I was that geeky or techie, <laughs> but the fact that we're able to go and speak on four platforms with comments, I am in seventh heaven at the moment. It's very it's amazing. Um, it's cool, isn't it? But I was going to say with Shannon, she was sort of like, you know, oh, 
well, where do you start and how do you start? And there's already people doing it. And, you know, and again, it wasn't just Shannon's point. I've heard it a lot that my reaction is that well, everyone's different. So like Ross could be blogging about his experience, which is different to mine with SMA, but you might have older, younger, male, female, like there's so many parts that make us all different and unique. And I think there's such a need for more disabled people to put their voice out on social media, but not to feel they need a million followers for it to be worthwhile. Absolutely. I mean, we we all have crises of confidence every now and then. I'm, I'm sure even you. Yeah. Um, that, don't we? You know, we all question whether we're going down the right path, whether we're serving our audience well, whether there's any point in us even doing it. And, you know, and I've had more of that recently because well I'm you know I started as a travel writer and um that's a bit of a tricky thing to try and do at the moment but yeah so you know my my ultimate decision was well I'm I'm just going to start writing a bit more about about how I'm coping at the moment about what my life looks like now and about how you know so one of the things that I so valuable to people I, I, I think it's also kind of normalising a little bit and just showing that, you know, yes, I am a wheelchair user. Yes, I have cerebral palsy, but also, like, I can bake a really good carrot cake. And, mm-hmm. like, that, that mile walk that I have with the dog once a day is vital. And, you know, and I'm trying some hit workouts in my wheelchair. And that those things that, yes, I, I guess a lot of people are doing them at the moment. But I think it's also about normalising it and saying, you know, I have cerebral palsy and I'm giving it a bash as well. Like I'm not, I'm not just disabled and I'm not just about travel. There are a lot of different aspects to who I am and what my life looks like at the moment. And yeah. that is valid and, and hopefully is, is helpful to other people. And I think like at the minute, I mean, I've been on the news a couple of times the last week and my, my voice, my expert opinion is like, how to be at home with a disability and yeah. to me that's just weird because in many ways it doesn't feel that different to everyone else that's just pissed off that they can't go out but yeah. on the other side there are some bits that are quite specific about being disabled with the coronavirus yeah that there is the health threat there's the like managing for me like managing the care team there's all those sort of there are those additions but for me again about influencing and having a voice the the world needs to know that we're not just the vulnerable group Absolutely. that might not get a ventilator if there's a choice of us and someone more healthy the world needs to know that we do hip exercises and we make carrot cake and i think it's just about normalizing disability in, in the positive meaning of normalizing because i'm definitely not normal and i'm happy with that you know? no, no, absolutely i think you know i am incredibly proud of my disabled identity and it is a huge part of my identity but i am also a person that that just does stuff that is just trying to get through this as best as i can just like everybody else and I think you're right in that you know we we can never have too many disabled voices out there talking about this stuff talking about accessibility and talking about travel because that is important but also just just talking about life just talking about who we are as people outside of the mobility age yeah I totally agree all right well we've got another let's go to a couple more questions from from the audience so it's our friend Chris again um, I'm surprised he's not said anything a little bit naughty because I'm, I'm used to Chris's sense of humor being a bit risque. But we've got a very important question there. There is every chance that accessible travel tourism will be dropped down the agenda with stakeholders. How can we keep the momentum up? What are your thoughts on that, Gary Ann? Yeah, I mean, I've I've been I've been mulling this over because I think that you know after after all of this whatever whatever normal life looks like on the other side um accessible infrastructure and accessibility information in particular will be even more important than it always has been because you know so many of us will have spent weeks and months in isolation and we'll all be desperate to start living our lives again 
But to be able to do that, we need proper detailed accurate accessibility information and you know and we do need to make sure it's high up on the agenda I, d I don't know I don't know how exactly we go about that what are your what are your thoughts Martin well carry on I'll let you know right <laughs> now <laughs> my thoughts are and I'm keep back in the drum it's about disabled people having a voice but not waiting to be asked to speak it's yeah. about blogging and social media and speaking about injustice, but also I'm very much a believer that positivity gets us further in the long run. And so it's about getting businesses to understand that injustice, but understand the opportunity of being inclusive. Like the business case, you and I know it like the back of our hand, but you know, like eight trillion dollar is the spending power of disabled people globally in a year i don't I do, do you know any of the stats for tourism and don't worry if you don't know off the top of your head but um, have you got any tourism I don't, I'm, I don't know the up-to-date figures but there was a figure flying around a few years ago that was something like 12 and a half billion annually just in this country That's um, yeah yeah it is, is contributed to um the tourism industry by disabled people and their family and friends i think that might have been updated now but that was sort of the headline one when it first came out a few years ago yeah i, th yeah, I the, think that, that's sort of good to frame god sorry go i was just going to say you know i think the other thing is that a lot of businesses who have now had to close you know retail businesses bars and restaurants tourism businesses they are in some way going to have to reinvent themselves to to yeah. survive in whatever this new world's going to look like. You know, I think I I wish that this wasn't the case, but I'm very doubtful that that everything's just going to open again and we're all going to be able to pick up life as it was. You know, and that's there a are, bit of a point, isn't it? It's not just about disability. There's actually like travel is going to be very affected. Full stop. Absolutely, and. You know, the opportunity is given to these businesses to say, you know, you, you are going to have to do things differently. You are going to have to, particularly from a marketing point of view, you know, you're going to have to build everybody's confidence, never mind just your disabled customers. But here is your opportunity to get it right. Here is your opportunity to, yeah. you know, it's it's almost a, a rebirth of, of the travel industry, of the tourism industry, and hopefully you know using our voices and as you said with other other disabled people on the internet using their voices we will be able to get the message across that accommodating us is more important now than it ever has been and i, I think with you know the the social shielding of essentially it's disabled people isn't it when you talk yeah. about those at risk of coronavirus it's people with health conditions therefore it's disabled people we're, we're back to our language chat but um, that's also been positive because I think it's made disability more visible. I think society has showed an amazing amount of compassion to, to want to make personal sacrifices when they are younger and healthier and maybe don't feel like they're as at risk, but they, that a lot of people are still happy to sort of do what's right for the bigger, you know, bigger society. Yeah. I, I hope we can carry on that sort of socially minded view that the virus has brought about once it carries on afterwards yeah i think i think you know going back to chris's point and chris's question it's it's it is tricky because you know budgets budgets are going to be stretched across the board um yeah. and it, whether or not we can get accessibility viewed as essential and as not nice to have we know that it's that it's much more than nice to have um i hope that accessibility initiatives won't be the first thing cut from the budget um oh. it's it's a difficult one isn't it i you know i don't think any of us know what what this is going to look like on the other side of this but all we can do no. is keep plugging away keep using our voices keep campaigning yeah, agreed, agreed. Well, th there's an unbelievable amount of comments coming in and I'm sort of like uh, doing the 
um, totally with what you're <laughs> saying. So we may not get to everybody's comment because otherwise like, my head's going to blow up. But <laughs> one thing that, we, one that I'll show now that we can both look to address. There we go. So Matthew from Facebook, I want to begin a disability lifestyle YouTube channel with the aim of showing both the positive and the negative sides of living with a disability and what it's like attending live music events such as festivals. How do I go about it and make sure I'm reaching my target audience? What do, what do you think to that? Okay. Marianne? So, I mean, YouTube specific is probably quite difficult for me to answer because I don't have a YouTube channel. Um, that That's not an area that I have yet diversified into. Um, but mm -hmm. I think just in terms of reaching the the right audience i would say you know just just get involved as much as you can in um different disability chat groups may, be, be that on on facebook on twitter um and also you know f just follow a lot of other people who are doing a similar thing you know follow them engage with them i i think it's build, building an audience is not something that can be done overnight it does take um quite a while but the best thing to do that with is, is just to talk in in your own voice just to really ultimately be yourself and you will naturally find people who want to follow you and who are interested in what you've got to say yeah i totally agree with you i think for me exactly what you said it's your own voice and it's the authenticity of yourself and I, and I think if you get hit up about is the video the right length or the right tone and is it for the right audience even if you can define an audience because you know I know that I, I have an idea that I want to put out positive engaging helpful content but it's not you know 20 year old males in Leicester do you know what I mean like it yeah. it, it could be all over the world and all ages so from a marketing point, it's good to have a like an idea on what you're trying to achieve yeah. in a way, the sort of objective. Yeah, exactly. But I think I, that's important. But I would say create and by just making articles, photos, videos, whatever different people do, you find as you go on what you're good at or crap at and yeah. what other people get more out of as well. Definitely. And don't focus on the numbers ever, because um, from a well, from a personal point of view, I, I just think if you're, you know, if you're reaching somebody, then you're helping somebody. Um, I would much rather reach and help five people than be worried about the fact that 5000 people aren't following me on Instagram. Um, I, I think it's, you know, it's quality engagement over quantity of numbers. And I think influence, people get hurt up, it's not repeating what you're saying, but people think influence is only quantity, but it, it's actually the outcome. So, like, my, my social media figures aren't that big, but I then get opportunities to speak at conferences and go on reaches more people. So it doesn't have to be a YouTube channel, for example, reaches a million, but you become known as someone that's good at talking about that topic. So other opportunities come and influences being able to probably in the end partner and work with other people. It's not doing it on your own. You get stuff done by working with others. And I think you found that, haven't you, that after you started blogging for a while, or opportunities came along definitely definitely and you know for, for me one of the biggest parts of influence one of well the, the thing that brings me the most joy out of giving influence is just receiving messages from individuals somebody messaging me saying yeah. thank you so much for writing this carry on like I I've always felt like this and I couldn't put it into words or like I had a message earlier this year from somebody who had not had a holiday in a number of years since they'd had a spinal cord injury. And they'd read one of my reviews and they booked their first holiday since being disabled. And I'm like that. 
that that is worth everything that is you know you can't put a price yeah. on that that's impact, then, right yeah that's well, making a difference a person, but that to me is worth fifty thousand followers absolutely exactly yeah i think people get hit up with like success fame money you know obviously on the baseline you've got to have enough of an income and a living no one's pretending otherwise but you know you, you can still earn a living but equally make a real difference and and not get help about the instagrammers that are you know next to their new porsche or whatever else it is yeah un unfollow those people don't don't follow anybody that makes you feel bad about yourself um but yeah no i i i, I don't want to be famous martin i don't want a porsche i don't want any of that stuff. i just i i just want a no. quiet comfortable life and and i want to be able to help people that's that's what motivates me yeah. so a um, couple of little comments for you. i've been flashing a few general ones up we we've, we've heard from chris with a bit of his sense of humor now mm -hmm. martin simply king of geeks that was obviously when we were talking about the me absolutely loving the tech stuff um, we've got a question from lisa on facebook is there a particular company which is best to travel with for holiday packages abroad what are your thoughts on that carry on mm, i'm i'm not really a package holiday customer um i i think right. that it again it, it comes from where you want your baseline to be if you are happy to do all of your own research spend a lot of time searching the internet um checking and double checking then booking an accessible holiday independently can be done it is possible you can also make mistakes along the way i've done it many times um yeah, there are, <laughs> yeah, yeah there are a number of um specialist travel agents and tour operators out there who will do all of that work for you you will pay a premium for that but if that is something that gives you peace of mind then it might be worth paying for um i i think it's it's about working out what your priorities are really um but I, in in terms of like names of actual companies i will always go back to using the accessible travel club on facebook searching in there for recommendations yeah. obviously your friend shrin set that up i think it was, was it you guys together or was it just shrin that set that up it's been wildly successful well, it, it came around during a combo um which i co-founded with shrin so yeah but, but shrin more led on that. yeah so yeah facebook group accessible travel club loads of useful advice in there yeah um kind of to touch upon ross has got such a silver tongue so I think there is no better expert than yourself. Thank you, mate. I love you too. But with the internet, email, phone, there's more reliable information. And I think that speaks to what we've been saying, really, that, you know, there are facts and stats that you can get from the supplier, from the hotel, from different sort of fact checkers. But our job as bloggers is to kind of entertain and inspire and move people to even want to bother trying to go on holiday so it's like a big puzzle when you need all of the different parts of the puzzle and people don't think about it like you just go about everyday life but from a marketing perspective disabled or not we come across a brand and we know that we've got a need for a product or service and gradually we talk to friends we go on facebook groups like the accessible travel club and we start to put together what's right for us. And I think it's that we're blessed to have all of these tools and information at our disposal at the moment. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I think what, what Ross might also be saying there is, is that there's only you that knows your needs. There's only, you know, as, a, yeah. as an individual to, you know, you to, to book your own trip is probably a more reliable way of doing it because you know better than a travel agent on the end of the phone what your needs are that's not to put yeah. travel agents they do offer a very very valuable service um and as i say if you know if that if that is something that gives you confidence then then absolutely go for that i think the other thing from a marketing point of view is you know i was having this conversation with somebody last week 
it's a, it's a bit of a trade off between not wanting to be singled out. We don't we don't want to be um, we don't want special treatment because we're disabled. But I do want companies to market to me. Uh, we we are a market that has money to spend, and if you are going to attract disabled guests to your accessible hotel, then you need to put out correct and detailed and accurate information to to allow us to make a choice and a decision about that. It's a tricky balance. Would you, would you agree? I love you for saying that because this is my big bugbear is, you know, we, we've had an uprising more accessible goods and services, although there's a long way to go. We've got improved customer service. Like I know Gavin has um, mentioned the welcome up in the comments there, and that's about improving customer service. And I think there's like trying to employ more disabled people. And, you know, maybe I'm biased because I studied marketing at uni, but I just look around and there's no representation of disabled people in advertising and marketing. And I think that's where influence and marketing is the, the opportunity that the more people genuinely want to help others and genuinely build up a community and eventually the brands are waking up that they should have representation of disabled people in the marketing if they've already done some of the hard work around the products and services being a bit better um yeah for, for me that's like the new frontier if you like how we get marketing campaigns to be inclusive definitely Definitely. And it and it, it is it is about doing it in the right way. You know, I, I think, like I said earlier, I don't want to feel singled out. I don't want to. It, it doesn't it shouldn't feel segregated. It should feel inclusive. Um, and, you know, my biggest book there is hotels that don't have any accessibility information at all. And I always give the example that you wouldn't build a new hotel and then just not tell anybody about it because you wouldn't have any guests. Yeah. You know, so if you have yeah. invested in becoming accessible, then communicate that. And if you don't know how to communicate that, then work with experts who can tell you how to communicate that and do it properly. Um, because particularly, you know, with providing information online, it can cost next to nothing. It, it you know it doesn't have to be this big huge budgetary exercise where um, you've got to spend lots and lots of money to communicate this information. There are ways in which you can do that, um, but generally, if you've created accessible hotel rooms, you've made a really significant investment in attracting a certain market mm. to your hotel. But you have to follow through yeah. and, and do the right things to actually yeah. attract them so that you can get a return on that investment. It's it's business like any other at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah and that's it. People see disability. And I think there's a lot of fear. What if we do an adaption and we do it wrong? What if we do a marketing campaign and we do it wrong? First of all, mainstream brands do it wrong with mainstream customers. That's yeah. business. That's life. Get over it. Yeah. But also talk with disabled people with disabled like do the way you would always segment a market and do focus groups and surveys and speak with your target audience yeah. just speak to disabled people but there's such a history that like they people presume what disabled people want but they don't actually ask us yeah and I, i'm gonna run if i can run now but that <laughs> that's something that has to change 100 percent, definitely so we've got Matt was sort of adding to his YouTube idea that it would talk about daily struggles with things like PAs and personal budgets or some people. I think that will resonate with a lot, a lot of different people. Uh, Ross is saying as soon as lockdown is over, get back to being out there. Also, in every interview someone does talk about what COVID is stopping him doing more than the usual. Spin on hospital and uh, talk about how his marriage, which man postponed. So I'm, I'm mumbling because I think people can read it as well what Spurs lose like thousands of people. So there's a bit of football banter in there. Um, but I think, I think what, what, what's your interpretation of what Ross is saying, carry on? So I think Ross is saying that, although we, you know, there's been a lot of interviews out there which very rightly have talked about the fact that we, as disabled people who are at risk, 
have yeah. um, are worried about the fact that we might not get access to ventilators, etc. But but Ross yeah. would also like us to be talking about how COVID is affecting our lives, just like anybody else is affecting us not being able to go to the football. Is it affecting yeah. you in that you? postpone your marriage which I wasn't aware of so that's that's sad yeah well, yeah so I think one I, I mean Ross me and Ross were texting because I was on Anglia News last night and um what I said to Ross I'll say to everyone watching now I said a lot more but the news only used that bit about a ventilator and that's the bigger point that the media want the story to be the way they want it to be for their audience if you like so they're not interested in the normal bits of being disabled with corona or covid they're only interested in the care team the ppa equipment and the the ventilator stuff so that's unfortunately on the media but that's by having things like this technology hello chris hello geeky me is we <laughs> can actually give the full story and yeah to, to your point about sorry go on carry on go on no, I, I was just agreeing with you that, you know, we can tell our stories. And for the first time in a little while yesterday, I sat down and just wrote a blog post about the fact that I'm not going to be traveling and the things that I am doing to cope. And I'm going to go a bit more in depth into those over the coming weeks. But it's taken me a while to get my head around writing like that, because I've always written about travel, even when I've written opinion pieces and pieces a bit more in depth into mental health and things. They have always had a travel theme. Um, so it, it, it's, I guess, going back to that bit of crisis of confidence again, that bit of, oh, my God, am I even still relevant now? Like, what, what, what is going on? Um, yeah. yeah. And that, that's, so, that's the demons that we all have to be aware that they sprout up in everybody. And you say, like, OK, I'm having one of those days. That's normal. That's fine. But ultimately push it away because, you know, you are worthy. You know, like, whether you're writing about being at home and in the garden with the dog and your um, husband, other half and all those, they're all as interesting and worthy as it is when you're somewhere around the world doing some crazy activity. And I think that as travel bloggers, like I almost got addicted to the adrenaline and addicted to like, what crazy thing can I do next for my audience? Yeah, yeah. And then two, three years ago, I was like, I don't really want to go in a plane or scuba dive. I'm I'm quite happy just chilling on a beach or chilling in the garden. But like that's we're a lot, I suppose my point, carry on, is we will we all change and we should evolve and grow. So if our audience get find that a bit weird, that's their issue. But yeah. we just put out what we believe and what we want to put out, and that, and that's to you. But that's to every creator and influencer which you have to be true to yourself which you said yourself earlier on right oh totally I mean look I'm never I'm never going to be one of these um proper Instagram influencers who's constantly collaborating with brands and putting big ads out there and stuff because it's not what I want it's not what I want it's not it's not well, who I am. You want it, really. that's the thing you don't want to do that. I, don't, I don't want to I I do I do collaborate with with brands with PR companies who are in the same ethos as me basically but I'm never yeah. I'm never gonna you know I'm never gonna sell out for a few hundred quid on um on an advert on something that is just wildly wow. out out of my zone. Um and I'm and I'm <laughs> that. that's because something there carry on was like if you went against your beliefs and values your inauthenticity would be smelled a mile off by your followers so it's one thing if you change your followers have to just get used to it because it's authentic to you but if you're doing something for a hundred quid and you don't believe in it it ruins your brand and it ruins the brand you're partnering with so it, it's nobody should do it just for the money ever yeah, yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And I had a bit of a similar awakening early last year where it was like, you know, we'd done a lot of trips in a really short space of time. We'd sort of packed it all in. It was pretty much all UK travel. We'd gone to France for one of them. But I'd done something like 
seven or eight trips in five months um whilst working full time as well um you know it was a lot it was a lot and the last few trips we just got to the accommodation and chilled out didn't really go anywhere we might have like gone out for dinner and had a dog walk but we didn't do the whole let's pretend to be tourists and write about everywhere we've been and take an instagram photo everywhere we go and we, we just didn't do it um and the the articles that i ended up writing were so much more about the benefits of just going somewhere and having a rest and you know how mentally I'd felt so much better and I've been able to properly enjoy my surroundings because I wasn't trying to pack too much in um but it's a journey isn't it you know I think we all have to go on those journey we all we all I believe have have a place in this influencer world where we start off wanting to do things specifically for the audience I must I must do this so I can write a blog post about it I must do that so I can write a blog post about it but I, I'm trying to turn that on its head and just write about life and and not yeah. live to write. Does that make sense? No, it does. And, it, and if in your life you travel, then you write about travel, yeah. but only because that's part of your life. You don't make your life about travel just because you feel you ought to do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So when um, we're getting near to the hour, so we'll, we'll start, well, it actually says 46 minutes on, on the clock there, but, but we'll sort of a couple more questions and chats and we'll start winding down. Um, I had a th comment up a moment ago that was about virtual tourism. So I guess there's two parts to it, like because we're all locked in, is there a place, do you think virtual tourism can, can be good? But also beyond COVID, how do you think tourism may sort of you know I don't know evolve in terms of environmental sustainability technology just some thoughts you've got around those topics would be great yeah. Karen. I mean I I think there is definitely a place for virtual tourism right now I'll, I'll be honest and say that it's not really something that I've utilized I'm I'm kind of just enjoying having a break from all things travel um sometimes it needs to be enforced for you to to, to recognize the benefit of just completely stepping away from something does that make sense yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. um so but i think it definitely does have a place um and i and i've seen from a lot of people that they are benefiting from and enjoying that and so long may that continue and also hopefully it will build a little bit of revenue for these businesses who who aren't able to physically welcome visitors at the moment i think that's very important um yeah um, I mean, it's it's really difficult to say what we can expect going forward, isn't it? Because it's it's unknown for all of yeah, us. Yeah, you know, my yeah. my hope is that it it encourages us all to just live a bit slower, to travel a bit slower, to to appreciate yeah. a bit more. Yeah. You know, I, I I used to go on a five mile walk with a dog every weekend, and I am missing that so much now. Because, you know, we are still going out and walking, but we're sticking to where it's safe, where there isn't very many people. And unfortunately, the path that we normally take when we go on longer walks will be will be more busy. Um, and, you know, that that is travel. That is that is me being a tourist in my hometown. Oh. And, yeah. I, I, you know, my hope is that we are more appreciative of trips to the local pub beer garden, of the, that we're not we're not, you know, thinking that we have to go to the other side of the world to have a valid travel experience and that we're yeah, all just so a bit more mindful and grateful. Yeah, and I, I suppose I'd add, you know, when I was 22 and I went to Australia, that was part of my evolution and growth and that was an important part of my life. So I feel there should still be that. I know you wholeheartedly agree with this, Carrie Ann. Well, I, there should still I, be the I've opportunity to do to Australia because of COVID. So yeah, I do wholeheartedly no. think I'm supposed to be going there in about a month. Well, no, I didn't realize that. Sorry to hear that. I mean, yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, there's one more question and then I think we'll wrap up. So Christopher's saying about um point if we can point in the direction, he's a disabled artist, recently created an inaccessible hotel room installation in Blackpool, been received very well, featured on the BBC. Um, 
my question would be, it would be valuable for this insight to be seen in different spaces. Could you point me in the right direction or just give me more to give thoughts? So I would, from my side, that's calling out for an article on disability horizons. So get in touch with me on any social media platform and we'll get an article sorted on Horizon. So actually tick, like it can go to some new people. But I also think back to our point about having your own platform that to to document and to share your own insights into that world every day, whether it's words, photo, video, audio, is very cathartic. It helps you sort your own creativity. But it's surprising how quickly it gets picked up through SEO or through social media. So my thought really is to start blogging about it and also guest blogging on other sites like Horizons, and you'll be surprised how quickly it gathers pace. Have you got any thoughts to add? I mean, I'd be more than happy to take a guest blog submission around this. So, you know, again, feel free to get in, get in touch with me through social so media. Two uh, publications already. <laughs> um, but I, I think, you know, it's, it is it is that, that term again, networking. It is just get it under as many noses as you can, you know, shout about it, tweet about it. Um, get in touch with people like me and Martin and other, you know, there are lots of other people in this space. And I can only speak for myself, but I'm sure Martin will agree. But we like to help people who are who are new to this yeah. world. You know, we had to start somewhere. Yeah. And we only got to where we are with the help of other people and by helping each other. And so, you know, never, never think that you that you can't reach out to somebody. The worst they can say is no. Yeah, well said. Well said. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll call it a day. I think um, we're going almost an hour. We've covered a lot, Carrie Ann. We've, yeah. well, I mean, the, the aim was to talk about tips of travelling, which I think, you know, in a way, the point was everyone's different. Do your own research. But equally, there are some sites and places to, to help find the answers wherever it is you want to go, what you want to do. We've talked about being an influencer content creation, community building, the downsides of it, of it and the pressures or the self-imposed pressures sometimes. And obviously we've talked about businesses, you know, the fact there's a market, the things that some businesses are doing or could do, particularly around the marketing. So I think we, we ticked off a lot of things we hoped to. Well, was there anything that you wanted to summarize or add before we say bye? I don't, I don't think so. I think um, we have just a little little minute here. Um, I, I I just really wanted to get across that obviously everything is uncertain for everybody at the moment. None of us really know what's going to happen, where we're going, and what we're doing. Um, I will be covering on my blog on my social channels much more about just the things that I'm doing day to day that keep me on a level mentally and physically um I hope yeah. that my audience will find that content helpful um and if there is anything specific that people would like to know about that then then just let me know yeah where can people find you most importantly so um my blog is carryannlightly.com um, all of my social channels are linked to from there, but pretty much all of them, Facebook and Instagram at least, are at Carrie Ann Lightly blog. And I'm at Carrie A Lightly on Twitter. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Carrie. And I, I, as always, like we have our phone chats and I love that we generally, you know, have a very similar passion and we support each other. Because I think, yeah, to, you know, I get those down days and those doubts as you do and it's great we're there for each other as friends and colleagues. But I think to share these insights is going to help so many people watching. So yeah, I really appreciate coming on the show. So tomorrow, um, I haven't actually got a guest lined up. I, I like doing it by the seat of my pants. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll see what happens tomorrow. But th this tech's been very useful and it's lovely having the comments and get engagement interaction. So thank you to everyone watching and joining Thanks. us today and watching the replay feel free to add questions and thoughts and carry on and we can have a little look for anything coming in later as well yeah
definitely definitely if there is anything that you spot that might be useful for me to answer just give me a shout more than happy thank yeah. you so much for having me as always like anytime like I always love when we when we chat I sometimes kind of forget that we've got an audience because we just get into chatting um, although it's been helpful to have the, the comments and stuff today um but yeah anytime thank you awesome Cool. Take care, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next episode of The Daily Sib.